Hey everyone, my name is Chris. Hopefully, I have an amazing day and uh, staying safe. Welcome, to ba welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video, we'll be talking about the recent updates with the NBA. Um, but quick notion: um, my mic is not. I don't know what's going on, but you can probably hear a little bit of buzzing, and that's my apologies. I gotta fix it up a little bit better. But also, before we get into this video, I would like to say thank you for all the support. And in the link in the description will be an extension to worldwide slash national hotlines. So if you or somebody you know needs help physically, mentally, or emotionally, please check the link in the description. It's worth reading. It'll always be there. It's free. But yeah, um, in today's video, we'll be talking about not week two necessarily, but updates around the league, any, I don't know, trade rumors, any notions going around for certain players, the underrated players, and the players of the week just so on and so forth but uh yeah let's get right into this video okay first thing i want to talk about is the eastern conference standings as you can see the top five teams are the sixers heat bulls raptors and nets obviously the wizards are six and the knicks are seven the knicks might move up back to top three i think because they just beat the bucks i'm always watching the game they just beat the bucks this is a pretty good statement game but obviously bucks fans y'all are missing three starters or three key players so it's not too bad um sixes are calmly the best of the east right now even without simmons and no one's stopping them beat and the heat look really good even though they had an embarrassing loss at celtics last night and the bulls their fr their friction's still really good they're starting really well the shocking teams that are not doing too well are just the hawks and the celtics I mean, Tatum, Brown's better than Tatum right now, and no one else can create offense for his team. And the Hawks, I think they're just, their chemistry's not the best, and Trey's still in a slump, but it happens, it happens. Uh, the Nets are still all right. They barely are beating the Pistons, and the Cavs are somehow top eight. I mean, Jared Allen's doing really good. Sexton's doing all right. Garland's doing really well. Their, their team's getting up there. But now for the West, we got the Jazz, Warriors, Mavericks, and Grizzlies, and the Suns wrapping it up for fifth. The Lakers are sixth, the Nuggets are seventh, and the Kings are eighth. Um, the most shocking things right now are, are the Grizzlies are performing their top five team in the league. I don't know how, even without Dylan Brooks, they're doing really well. And the Warriors are really scary, and the Jazz are calmly just destroying teams. I mean, they're a good regular season team, do I expect them to make do this in the playoffs i don't know um the most shocking ones are personally the pelicans and honestly the kings the pelicans are just missing zion so that's why their death is really bad i didn't expect them making the playoffs and i still don't but uh, the kings are somehow doing really well with their veterans and healed is looking like a top trade target right now with the way he's scoring and it's really exciting to watch barnes and healed and fox do their thing and Halliburton's really good. Their team is doing really well. The Suns are picking it up and the Lakers look just god awful right now. I know they're like I know they're like five and five or so right now, but still they look really bad. Okay, for the offensive uh, and defensive leaders throughout the leagues or stats leaders, obviously see points, rebounds, and assists and blocks. I think the most surprising ones for points is DeMar. I wouldn't expect him to do this well like I expected him to do really well but I didn't let I didn't expect the coach to let him get the green light for having the most points in the team especially barring that Levine's a little hurt right now so it's really surprising uh for rebounds Valachunas is still surprising me assist Dane is having a really bad offensive slump shooting wise and he's just passing the ball more he needs to get out of Portland I'm sorry he needs to Blocks. The most surprising one is honestly Al Horford. He's doing really well. He destroyed the Heat last night, and he's doing really well as their starting center. Do I think they? Do I think they should start him over Williams? Honestly, I don't know. That's a good. That's a tough decision. But no. Now three pointers made and steals. Steph's averaging five effing threes a game which is actually ridiculous obviously we expect him to make seven but five's a really high amount Melo's hitting at four as a four clip which is nuts because i personally think he's their honestly right now he's their third best player i'm not even lying he's doing he's doing really good for them uh he was hitting at an absurdly high clip pg is just destroying the west right now being the lone star in uh, los angeles 
And I, I'm surprised McCollum is doing really well with the three-point uh, attempts and makes. Uh, I know he's doing well statistically wise, but it's still surprising. And steals, PG, Gary Trent, Jimmy, Caruso, and Paul. Really good defenders, every single one of them. Now for the previous games, we got the Clippers being the Timberwolves, the Mavs being the Spurs just by a one-point margin, the Warriors being the Hornets, the Sixers being the Bulls in a great game, the Raptors being the Wizards in a dominant, and I mean dominant, just second quarter attack, and the Nets being the Hawks with ease. Yeah, it's, it, these were calm games. I think the most surprising was honestly the Sixers being the Bulls. I know Levine's hurt, but still, it was a really good game, and I didn't expect the Sixers to beat them without, like, Simmons. I really didn't. Now, for the other prior matches are the Jazz destroying the Hawks. I mean, I think they were without Mitchell, too, and they still won that, which is really scary. And the Celtics embarrassing the Heat. I watched that game fully, and that was just one of the worst performances I've seen the Heat have in, honestly, probably, like, three years. It was that bad. Um, the Suns being the Rockets in a good third quarter fourth quarter game Jalen green looks really well and the thunder i mean taking it to the lakers i don't think anyone expected the thunder to win these games or even remotely being close but i've said this prior years shea is the future of the league and i don't think anyone wants to like agree but shea is the future of the league and so is dort but yeah i mean they balled out against the lakers last night i guess besides the lakers and Thunder, the game I won the pinpoint was the Celtics and Heat. I mean, this game looked really bad going to the third for the Heat. They just couldn't hit a shot. You can obviously see the percentages. The one with the high percentage is obviously the Celtics. And the Heat, I mean, I think Duncan was like 5 for 17. Jimmy was just being passive, and I think Lowry got hurt, sadly. So this was the embarrassment of the week. I didn't expect the top five team in the East to get exposed like this i mean it's just one game but still you got to take accountability that there needs to be more done for losses like these and shout out to jalen brown i said this years ago when like four years ago when jalen brown was a rookie he is gonna be the future of the celtics and i as everyone can see he is he's a two-way shot creator and i'm i can argue till i die that he's better than tatum I'll admit to that. I've been saying this for the past three years. He's better than Tatum overall, but Tatum is their number one. And I mean, you can go either way, but Jalen Brown is the best player on this team. And that's just a fact. He is their best player. And if he doesn't have a good game with Tatum, you can just say the Celtics team's lost. I'm sorry. Like without them, this team is not good. They're, it's just a fact. Jimmy is still number one in MVP, in my opinion, with the statistics he's putting up. This was a passive game from him, and I don't know, we'll get future updates on the Lowry injury. I think it's just a minor ankle sprain, which is really good. Hopefully he recovers. But yeah, I want to talk about Jalen Brown like I already have. He's recently been averaging 25 point, 26 points technically. A steal, half a block, or a block technically, three assists, and six rebounds on... 78% shooting and or free throw shooting and 40% from three and 50% from just everywhere. He's um the last five games he's had 17, 28, 28, 34, and 13. Obviously, you can dismiss that 13, but he is their best player, and I'm not I can argue that all day. He's just he's too good on both ends of the floor for them not to see he's their future. Um I mean, there's not much you can really say about him. Good free throw shooter, great mid-range shooter, pretty good three-point shooter, has a good pull-up. He played, I think, guard in high school and a little bit in college, so obviously his handles are really, like, secure and fast and quick, so he doesn't get plucked a lot. And he has a really good tendency to rip ball handlers. He's not the most, um, what's the term, uh, laterally quick player, but he can bump to bigger and faster players. Now I want to talk about the most underappreciated or un, uh, underrated player for the East this week is Fred Van Vliet for the Toronto Raptors. I know them losing Lowry and Dragic not being healthy is key because obviously he's going to be their number one guard. And Flynn is obviously he still needs development, but he's been averaging 19 points, 7 assists, and 5 rebounds. And this team defensively is no joke. I'm not lying. This team is no joke. Um, he's... 
the last five games he's had 33 17 16 19 and 26 and he is the most underrated player for the east in my opinion now for the west the most underrated player in my opinion is sga my boy shea shea Gilligis alexander he torched the lakers twice and honestly there's besides I don't know what guard besides Murray in the West that's guarding him. There's not much. Obviously, he's not, not on a good Thunder team. They're obviously rebuilding. But he's averaging 24, a steal, 4 assists, and 5 rebounds off 81% from free throw. And almost damn near 40 from 3. And he's the future of the West in the Thunder. He's... I'm going to argue right now he's top 6 at point guard. I'm being honest. I think he's top 6 went healthy and he is the future of the backcourt for the thunder and the last five games he's been uh, putting up 28 28 15 27 and 30 just the craftiness and the playmaking ability and the absurdly weird and abnormal shot creation he has and just the fearlessness he's gonna be a top five point guard in this league one day and i'm really proud of this thunder team him and Dort are looking really well. I, you could have chose Dort over SGA if you really wanted to for most underappreciated player in the West, but it, for my opinion, it's SGA. I mean, that logo shot he had against the Lakers was probably the biggest FU shot in the, this whole season. Honestly, that was a really big FU shot, and I was so hyped when I seen that. Shout out my boy SGA. And now for the final most underappreciated player of the week is DeJounte Murray for the Spurs and I love his game just a two-way playmaker sort of shot creator he's getting there he's improved this season I really love to see it still not the best free throw shooter but he's been putting up really good numbers 23 8 and 9 just last, last um, two days ago against the Mavs uh, obviously the loss of that game is the Spurs they're rebuilding He's uh, put up 16, 23, 23, and 21 on absurdly high rebounding and assist rates. Good three-point shooter. Still needs to fix up the field goal percentage, but I don't think that really matters. It's the Spurs offense. They're just rebuilding at this point, and he's easily their best player. Um, he is the future of the Spurs, and the most underrated, I guess, skill he has is just his mid-range game. He's a really good mid-range shooter, and he learned it from DeMar. And I love to see it. You really love to see it. Now this will be the end of the video. My apologies if this was quite short. Um, yeah, I just been dealing with some health stuff, and that's all my. It's my apologies. I will try. I'm really trying to be more consistent. But yeah, again, my also my apologies for the little buzz in my mic. I gotta fix it up later. But yeah, I'll keep everyone updated throughout the week on my opinions on just scores and top players and just everything around the league as best as I can. I really want to be a part of this NBA community because I really love watching basketball. And I uh, hope everyone enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you wanted to leave a like, a like, I appreciate everything. Subscribe, comment, share the video. Thank you very much. But yeah, my name is Chris. Hopefully you have a great night and uh, I'm out. Peace.